So we just left the New York State Solar Farm office and we're heading to the New York State Solar Farm warehouse right now to go pick up some panels and drop them off to a job site. This job site's pretty special to me because it's actually my father-in-law's home. Uh, I installed this project within my first couple years of business. So we're talking 10 plus years ago, we installed this ground mount system. I believe it's a 4KW system and we use Gen 1 microinverters from Enphase and his, the system is still operational. It's still working really good, but his usage has increased. He switched over to heat pumps and he's using more than this ground mount could produce now. And since it's a ground mount, all the racking is already there. What we're gonna do is take off the old panels and microinverters, put up new panels and microinverters. We're actually switching the panels out to a 460 watt REC. We're switching the orientation, which they're currently in landscape and going to portrait. And, and then we're just gonna have to rewire the system. And by doing this, we're able to get an extra, I believe it's 2KW in power out of this ground mount, just upgrading all the technology. So head into the warehouse, gonna load these panels up in the Ford Lightning and drop them off. And we'll give you a tour of the system when we get there. We'll show you what we're taking off and what we're putting up. What's up, Augusta? Perfect timing, right? So here we are, this is the old ground mount that we did that you probably couldn't even tell that it's 10 plus years old besides this panel which just got a little loose in between here and when we retightened it down it got a little crooked. So that's really the only thing that you could tell on here that's a little out of sync with the original. But come check out the back of it over here. This is where you could tell that it's an older system. These are the old Enphase microinverters. These are the M, I believe there's the M190 microinverters. And you could even see over here, they're still blinking green. So still blinking, which means still working, still producing. And on this system, we did like a techno helical post that goes straight down. And then at the time, we used these Unirac caps um, and built our racking system off of there. This was Unirac rails. And um, we put this like um, siding channeling in at the time to have our wire management. You can see this one came down since uh, the zip tie had it up here, zip tie must have broke. Um, but come over here, this is pretty sick over here. This is what I absolutely love about the old systems and wish we could still do this. I guess we could, but the industry's moved away from it because everybody has monitoring in their app and wants to see their consumption and their production. This is how we told we showed how much your solar was producing back in the day. And it was so friggin' easy because you could just come out here and look at your Hylia meter and see what you're producing. This meter spinning right here is production and it's still been producing for over 10 years. And this is our combiner panel. So we have two strings of 15, uh, two, two strings of panels on 15 amp breakers and yeah, I absolutely love this. We used to put these on every single project because back in the day, we had to report what the systems produced with the state after a year to show that they were still produci producing and meeting um, the production that we anticipated. But on this system, we're actually, now that we're upgrading it, we're gonna take this out, take this out. Um, we're gonna 
use this conduit, pull the wire out of it, and run two strings back to the house and use the Enphase Gateway Combiner Panel. And these panels, let's see if we could see what these were. These were, these were ET solar panels and 230 watts. And now we're moving to 460 watt panels. So yeah, pretty cool old system that's still working. But again, the reason we could leave this up for another 10 years and it would still be good. Uh, but the reason we're swapping it out is because heat pumps in the home and just needing a little more production out of this system. So it's great that we're able to reuse. We're reusing all of the posts. Um, what we're replacing is the rails, panels, microinverters, and we're gonna switch the orientation of the panel. So instead of having them landscape like this, we're gonna have them um, in portrait and have two. So a row of two going across. But yeah, stick around and we'll show you the progress throughout. Uh, I just want you guys to check out real quick how we take this system down, but then also let's do a little uh, archeology span on this system. We took the panels off here already. So you could see here, this is the microinverter. This is what plugs into the home runs on the back of the panel. This is the old trunk cable from Enphase that we used to use. And you could see the way all the microinverters are grounded together with this old uh, bare copper that we used to use. Um, so all the inverters are grounded together. Then all the rails, you can see the bare copper going across over there on the top. So it's just all of the practices that we used to use when installing a system. Now the grounding is similar, but a little different than it used to be. But if you come on the backside here, you can see guys are for this system here we had, uh, we actually went through the frame of the panel. So you can see right here, these are, this is the hardware right here where it went through the back frame and was held on to the rail just like that. So we're taking all that down. Then we're gonna take all the micros down, all the wiring across, all the home runs, and then we're gonna start to put up all, all of our new equipment. But Pretty cool to see Clever right now, what he's doing with taking, taking everything down. Just unscrewing the panels, getting those down. Then we'll go back at all the microinverters down. I totally forgot about these. So for, for grounding for the panel, back in the day we had to use, they were called Wiley Weebs. Augusta, you remember the Weebs we used to have to use? Underneath every panel, these go, and these for grounding. For grounding. And these little clamps, right? Yeah. Not so much clamps, but these little nubs right here would push into the back of the panel. Panels grounded to the rail, and then rails grounded to our combiner and from there and so on. But this used to be so annoying having to put these on the back of panels. So happy we don't have to use these anymore. Our new REC panel, 460 watts. This is what we're putting up on the ground mount now. This is our original panel that we're using on the ground mount, which was an ET solar, 230 watts. So it's just amazing that they're, you know, it's not the identical size. I'll put this one in front so we could see how much bigger the new one is, but also keep in mind the output as well. So here it is, that's lined up on that edge. So original panel versus the new panel. And for about five inches more, six inches more on this side and about an inch on the top and the bottom, we're, 
getting all that power extra. So it's just amazing to see how far the technology's come and just how much better it's gotten. I mean, efficiency wise, we're talking, I believe this ET solar panel was probably a 16 or 15% efficient panel. This REC is a 22% uh, efficiency on that panel. But so cool to see the time difference in panels and uh, just the technology we we're using back then. And you could see here too, the connectors in between the cells. Um, here it's this ribbon, it's a, these two bus lines going across, connecting one cell to the next. And this REC panel almost looks more of like that shingled. And you could see the bus lines in between here, smaller, which smaller connecting in between means that we're shading less of the cell and getting more production out of the cell. So that's also another reason why this REC panel and the newer, newer tier one panels are so much more efficient and more productive than uh, these panels of the past. And you could see too, look at the, the different thickness in panels. This is our original and this is the new one. And you know, a difference too is, is the leads on the back. So this is, some panels are still like this where the leads come out here. I actually kind of prefer them coming out this way. You have your positive and negative coming out of your junction box in the back of the panel. But the newer panels have two J boxes and positive negative leads on each side, which sometimes works out better, sometimes works out worse. Um, but here you could see it here, your negative lead and your positive lead. And um, yeah, just amazing to step back and look at a difference in let's just say 15 years of panels from our old panels, our 230 watt ETs to our 460 watt RECs. Now the next thing is, this is our microinverters on the original system. These are Enphase M190 and the 190 stands for the max continuous uh, wattage that these would put out um, paired with the panel that we had there. So max continuous, 190 watts. Here's the microinverter that we're using on our current system. This is an Enphase IQ8X, max continuous 360 watts on this. So you could see the differences. This is more of that hard plastic. This is that, that metal exterior. Um, but yeah, those are, those are our differences. 190 continuous, 360 uh, watts continuous. Um, it's cool to upgrade it and uh, just get more power out of this array that's been here for a little bit. It's all finished. It's got the REC 460 panels up, the Enphase IQ8X microinverters behind it. It is up, it is producing. The biggest takeaways I got right now from the system is just how clean it looks. Before we had those 230 watt, um, I believe ET panels that we had up here. Um, and 
it was, I found the date because in the Enphase app, I went back to the history to see when that we installed that system. It was 2010, so almost 15 years ago, we installed that system. So we had one inch between each panel, um, one inch mid clamps. You could see how much cleaner and sleek it looks right now. Black rails, black end caps. And when you come around the backside of it, we're able to shed so many components off of this system. All we have is our one junction box behind the array. Before we had a combiner panel back here, we had our Hylia meter back here showing like an analog version of um, just the production of the system. So now we're able to get rid of a couple pieces of decking, just have our one junction box. And behind the array, you could see these are these are our microinverters. So right now, they're green. All the green blinking dots we're producing, we're connected to the grid. Everything is working really well right now. We're able to shed so much from back here. It just looks a lot cleaner and better than it did before. But most of all, the production is insane. Um, but something I want to keep in mind is we, we would have kept that existing system up because it was working fine. Um, the thing about it though is right now we're seeing a lot of homeowners usage increase. So when usage increases, the only way you could get more production is either add more solar or um, increase, you know, get a different panel type if you were installed 10 plus years ago. So that system was installed 15 years ago. The only way we're able to get more production is by increasing, um, taking the old panels off and upgrading to these 460 watt panels. Uh, the example I like to use is if you bought a swimming pool and you're in the swimming pool and the water's up to your shoulders and then 10 years later the water's still up to your shoulders, why would you get rid of it? You wouldn't, you would keep it. The only reason you would is if you need more production and that's the way we build our systems out. So our new systems and our old systems, 10 to 15 years down the road, they're still gonna be producing what they are. The only reason you would upgrade is to get more production. Something I learned throughout this process, originally we were gonna delete the old account and just add this to that existing account. What we did is we kept the existing account as a whole, but added this as a separate system. So basically we made it like the other system is still active, uh, just so we could have all that data of 15 years of production data. And now we started a new account with this one so we could toggle back and forth. We could see the old system and the new system. So we're able to do that in our end phase account. So in the end phase account, you could drop down and you could see both sites. So if I go back to the old site, you're able to, to log back in and something we'll look at right now, we'll see the array. It's actually misreporting. It's showing that some panels are still, oh, it's got like little, little demon heads on all the panels. Everything's just not working. But when we go back to the new system, we could see what we're producing. And you could see all the panels right now. So um, if we look at it from this standpoint, because this is what the array is. So this top panel, top left panel, produced 1.27 kilowatt hours today, which all of them have. Basically all of them are within, like right in that range of 1.27 kilowatt hours and it's one in the afternoon. So. Uh, let's look at yesterday. So we'll go back to yesterday, see what we produced. I think yesterday was a crappy day. Yesterday we had a lot of rain. So let's go back to the day before. This is a little better example. So a little better day, November 33.78 kilowatt hours of production. So cool to be able to get that. The thing that we also have on this now is on the last system, we did not have consumption monitoring. Now we have consumption monitoring with this system. So you have the panels, microinverters, and then what we did add is inside the utility room, a combiner panel where we're able to have the circuits, our consumption monitoring, and everything in there. So thanks for following around. This was a walk down memory lane. This system from 15 years ago, upgraded it, gave it new life, and producing more power than ever. So thanks for uh, continuing on the journey with us.